Imaging the same stakes we all care for, but without the environmental impact, without using any antibiotics, and without involving any animal welfare issues. That's exactly the vision of RF farms, producing high quality steaks directly from cells we isolate from a healthy animal without harming it, by reproducing a natural phenomenon for tissue regeneration outside the animal. The company has been co-founded with the Strauss Group and with the Technion Israel Institute of Technology. We're part of the World Economic Forum's Technology Pioneer Program, part of EIT Food, and uh, we've been also recognized by UNESCO and NetExplo as one of the 10 most promising sustainable technologies in 2020. The company is led by a team of experienced and seasoned entrepreneurs and managers uh, coming uh, from the academy, but also from um, biotech companies and food companies. We have a very high level advisory board with a very strong focus on sustainability. And I'd like to start with a misperception. Many times we hear about the need for feeding 9 billion people in 2040. Actually, in 2018, we're already using the resources of 1.7 planets. We really need to, to figure out how we can, as quickly as possible, change the way we manage our natural resources in order to get back to balance in nature and stop depleting our resources. Agriculture by its own is responsible for over a quarter of the global greenhouse gas emissions and livestock and farming specifically for close to 15% according to FAO. But beyond the direct impact of livestock farming, there's also a very strong um, and significant indirect impact. Today, 46% of the global harvest is used for animal feed, meaning that meat is really the key to just and sustainable agriculture transition. And we've seen two approaches developing in the last, uh, last years to uh, address those issues. One is to replace meat with plants and to process the plants in order to make them uh, feel, look, taste as much as possible to meat. That's the meat analog approach promoted by Beyond Meat, Impossible, and many other um, plant-based companies. The second approach, which is relatively new, is the cell-cultured or cultivated meat approach. There is no product in the market yet, but it's a completely different uh, philosophy. The idea is to uh, stick to meat, but to change the production process for obtaining the same meat um, and uh, providing uh, the same nutritional quality, the same sensory quality as the meat we all know today. And this is important because we do see a paradox in the, in the um, animal protein market. On one hand, there's an increase in demand for, for meat and other animal products due to the increase of the global middle class, driven primarily by Asia. On the other hand, due to the same um, limitations of resources we've discussed before, many experts believe that it will not be possible to maintain the same production level for conventional meat. So we need to find a way to supplement conventional meat with additional products, with different options. And that paves the way for both plant-based and cultivated meat. According to Etik Kearney, cultivated meat uh, alone should represent an opportunity of $630 billion by 2040. Aleph Farms is sticking very much to nature, using non-GMO cells, but also um, reproducing as closely as possible the natural environments of the coarse body in order to reproduce the same nutritional quality, sensory quality, and uh, culinary quality of the meat growing inside the animal. What's uh, uh, characterizing other farms within this emerging industry is the combination of a scalable cultivation platform with a clear path to cost priority, together with using natural cells, non-GMO, non-immortalized, still suitable for mass production, and the focus on steaks, meaning um, uh, growing structured whole pieces of meat. On top of that, Aleph Farms is working hand in hand with meat and food industries in order to lead together uh, this uh, needed uh, food system transition as an ecosystem, not as a standalone company. You can see here the first, uh, the picture of the first prototype released at the end of 2018. 
since then we've been working on turning this prototype into a commercial uh, a product. And here is a rendering of the, the first uh, product we'll release in a, a few years from now in retail, um, which will be um, uh, fully transparent with a lot of uh, consumer facing information. Those are some uh, feedbacks from journalists who tested the meat. The feedback is unanimously um, positive, both on the uh, test and texture. And following the completion of the first uh, commercial prototype um, at the end of 2020, we plan to start transferring this product um, onto a production facility beginning of 2021. And by the end of next year, we should have a first biofarm, a first uh, pilot plant operational. We do expect a first market launch, second half of 2022. And 2025 should be the first year of full scale production and commercialization. At that time, uh, we will already be carbon neutral. The large scale production facilities will look very much like uh, dairy production facilities, fully automated and hygienic with no contact with living nor slaughtered animals. Based on the surveys we've performed, uh, we do uh, see that there is a huge opportunity for non-GMO cultivated meat, and there are some early data showing that the expected acceptance for cultivated meat should be higher than for plant-based meat analogs. The regulatory path for this type of products is today relatively clear um, in the US, in Europe, and in most of the Asian countries. Alice Farms is on a mission to solve environmental, public health, and ethical issues within the food ecosystem replacing factory farming or industrial farming practices with a better way. But we'd be also the first company in this space to commit to be carbon neutral. And we believe that cultivated meat will have a significant role in the transition toward carbon neutral economies in Europe and in other parts of the world, and will supplement um, regenerative agriculture with additional capabilities in order to meet the demand for animal protein. Another significant um, contribution of cultivated meat will be to food security. Um, the Chatham House in 2017 identified um, choke points related to global trade and the risk associated with um, the import of food in different parts of the world. Cultivated meat can be produced anytime, anywhere, and can solve a very significant um, uh, issue with the, uh, malnutrition and with uh, the resilience of the global food supply chain. To conclude on uh, uh, the sustainability aspect of cultivated meat, we believe there is no other technology out there we know which can promote up to 10 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And together with other companies in this space, including Israel, we intend to position cultivated meat as a cornerstone of a new global food ecosystem. And just to conclude, I want to mention that for a new protein solution to be, um, uh, to have a, a real impact in the market and to drive a real change, it has to take into account the preferences of the consumers. It has to be able to, to fit into the consumer expectations and to manage well the consumer expectations. It's not enough just to find a technological solution that elephants will put a lot of focus on quality meat, working hand in hand with the consumers and with the existing food and meat industries to make sure a product will be fully accepted. And by that, we'll drive wider acceptance for cultivated meat. Thank you. Once upon a time, the world was in balance. People used to grow their own food. They even called animals by their names. There was a connection between what we grew and what we ate. But today, in our hyper-industrialized world, we've lost this connection. We send billions of animals to slaughter every year. Using 30% of available lands, consuming 15,000 liters of water 
for every kilo of beef produced, increasing issues of contamination, antibiotic resistance, and climate change, throwing our world out of balance. But what if we could go back to growing food that was in balance with nature? What if we could grow a steak identical to the steak we all like, but without the downsides to health and the environment, and in a way that's more humane? At Olive Farms, we believe meat should be celebrated and enjoyed. That's why we directly grow safe, cell-based, real meat similar to farm meat. The same meat with an improved production process. Olive Farms replicates the muscle regeneration process that naturally occurs inside the cow, but on the outside. Using the same types of cells found in a steak, we grow slaughter-free meat in 3D, ensuring an end product which obtains the same taste, texture, and structure, advancing towards our vision of creating a cell-based steak. We're entering a new era by growing meat that's good for you, good for animals, and good for the planet, leaving a better legacy to future generations. This is no fairy tale. This is a true story brought to you by Olive Farms. Farms are excited to announce a game-changing moment in cellular meat history. We're getting closer to our vision of creating a cellular steak, providing the experience, look, and feel of the steak we all know. We've successfully produced the first pieces of beef steak grown from natural cells without harming any animals. Meat is a complex tissue. This breakthrough includes various cell types found in conventional cuts of meat grown together outside the animal to form a 3D structure similar to meat, but using more sustainable, safe, and ethical methods. These first cell-based meat cuts demonstrate our capability of achieving our vision of growing steaks. This meat had a great look and the original texture of a steak. Finally, meat you can enjoy that's good for your health and the planet from Aleph Farms.